Disclaimer. This book may contain content that is considered historically inaccurate or culturally insensitive by modern standards. My hope is that by exploring old literature, we will better understand why people of the past thought the way that they did and understand the influences that shaped their culture. This video is not intended for young audiences. Hi, I'm Morgan, and today I will be reading from Out of Door Book, which is the seventh book in a collection or series of books called The Children's Hour, published by Houghton Mifflin Company in 1907. And today I will be reading you The Bird Room by Olive Thorne Miller. When I began to be interested in birds, I lived in a city where not many beside English sparrows were to be seen. I wanted to know something about our common birds. Moreover, I never looked into a bird store without long longing to set every poor little captive free. So I set up a bird room every fall for several years. I went around to the bird stores in New York and Brooklyn and bought all the stray American birds I could find. The dealers did not make a business of keeping our common birds, and now it is against the law to do so. So, they usually kept only such birds as canaries, parrots, and other regular cage birds, but occasionally they would have a robin or a bluebird or oriole tucked off in a corner, and these birds were the ones I bought. In one store, I could find a catbird moping on a high shelf or in a dark back room, and another a bluebird scared half to death, and dumb in the midst of squawking parrots and singing canaries. In this way, I collected in my bird room eight or ten, usually, of our native birds, and always in pairs when I could get them. I put each one in a big cage and left the doors open all day, so that they had the freedom of a large room with three big windows and plenty of perches all about. Then I gave almost the whole of my time to taking care of them and studying their ways through the winter. And as soon as spring came and birds began to come back from the south, I took my little captives, those who were able to fly, and I thought could take care of themselves, carry them out into the country or a big park and set them free. Then the next fall I found a new set for, for my bird room to be liberated again as soon as it was safe. I took such good care of the birds, gave them so many things they liked, made them so comfortable, and let them have such good, easy lives, that almost everyone was happy and perfectly contented to stay with me through the winter, when times are sometimes hard for them out of doors. Then, when they began to get uneasy in the spring, I let them go, as I said. I have explained thus carefully about my bird room, because I do not approve of keeping wild birds in cages, and I never had one caught or caged for me, not even for study. Every one I ever kept was set free as soon as it was safe for him. It is no kindness to set a canary free, nor a bird that is injured or has been kept for years, and so is unfitted to take care of himself. Canaries are born in cages of caged parents. They have been taken care of for generations and have no knowledge how to get food or find shelter. Turning one out, turning one out into the world is about like turning a two-year-old baby out to get its own living. The only way to mitigate the hard lot of a canary is to make him so happy that he will not wish to be free. I could tell you many stories of canaries who had escaped, coming back and beating against a window to get into the only home they knew. And that is the end of The Bird Room by Olive Thorne Miller. I hope that you enjoyed this story and that you're having a great day. Bye!